What's up, YouTube? It's the Action Figure Grader coming back to you with another Hasbro Star Wars The Vintage Collection market update. And I'm pre-making this video, so some of this data is from last week because I, if you're watching this video, I've got a fairly non-risky surgical procedure I've got to go through uh, if you're watching this video. So uh, I've already told Chris W. over at Rogue Five Toys that uh, if I should pass away during my surgical procedure, that all of my toys are to be sold except for the Bosks, all of my mint on card and rare Bosks, they are not to be sold. They are to be set on fire and then recorded on video being set on fire and then send them to Boss Bounty. So let's go ahead and dig right into a number of really nice vintage collection items that sold here recently. This is a VC-17 General Grievous one that I still want to get. It's on my want list. I just don't have the bandwidth to get any more vintage collection right now. Uh, just too many. I got too many right now. But this is one I really want to get. This is a nice clean card. This is the Rocket Firing Fet retail release. Uh, the U.S. card punched example though. Uh, but very clean card overall. Very clean. It's probably like 85 or 85 plus condition. It was listed for 135 with 1425 shipping. It sold for 125. 125 is a really good price for a punched example of this General Grievous. Look how clean this card was. Very nice. It's not perfect by any means. You know, it's got a little bit of kind of spider baiting going on down there at the very bottom of the front of the card back. But look how awesome this figure looks inside the blister. I've, I've got to get this one. I'm sorry. I keep saying I'm going to get it, and then I never do because I get sidetracked with other stuff. So <laughs> one of these days I'm going to get one. But that is a really beautiful example. Uh, here was a Ultimate Galactic Hunt foil version of Clone Commander Cody. That one sold for 150 bucks. Pretty clean card overall. A little bit of wave to the card as the seller was kind enough to show in the photos, but that's a, that's a pretty good price. 150 free shipping for Clone Commander Cody. Another unpunched U.S. card back for Django Fett sold. I believe we've talked about this seller in the past, and he had three of them available, and or two of them sold as of the last video, I believe, and then this one just sold here yesterday. So. $225 free shipping. That seems to be kind of the going rate. I found two or three other recent data points for VC34 Django Fett US card back unpunched and all of them sold for between $220 and $230. So they're selling for a pretty narrow band right now. You might be able to get it for cheaper in an auction, but for buy it now situations, that's kind of what the going price is right now for a VC34. VCPO3, there were a few examples that sold here recently. This one was listed for $250. Very clean card back. Uh, it included the, the white shipper box. It's obviously been taken out of the box. It looks like on the back of the card on the right-hand side there, it's got a, either a little crease or, you know, just some blemishes from the, where the figure was stamped onto the card back. Kind of a blurry photo, so it's hard to know for sure. But anyway, that one was listed for two fifty-five. That one sold for one sixty-five, one sixty-five. So that's a pretty great price. It seems like they've been going in that one fifty to one seventy-five range. This one also sold for one seventy, and it also included the mailer box. I also found one other data point where it sold for one hundred and eighty-five dollars, one hundred and eighty-five dollars. So that gives you a nice narrow band for VCPO three. It's another one I still want to get at some point, but. Uh, 165 to 185 is the going rate for a nice, clean, unpunched example of the rocket firing mail away Boba Fett. Uh, another data point for VC64 Princess Leia in her slave outfit. This was a Canadian card back. Another Canadian example. It was not perfect by any means. This sold on July 4th. And where is that? Uh, it, there was a photo that showed the bottom of it and why I did not bid on it was because it had a little bit of wear to the blister. And I'm trying to find it. It might be in this photo right here. You can see there's a little crinkle at the very bottom of the stem of the blister. A little dent. So that's what kept the price down on this one. But it's the beautiful unpunched Canadian card back. So you can see age, idad, idadi on the upper left-hand corner on the front. And then on the back, it's got all of the multi-language name pill there. So you know that this is the Canadian card. That one sold for 160 Canadian or 122 U.S. dollars, and that's a pretty good deal if you're willing to live with that defect on the on the stem. But uh, another really high, uh, high grade, a high grade example can go for double that easily. Uh, this was an interesting lot. This included VC 108 Jar Jar Binks along with two VC 74 the Gungan Warrior, 
and uh, it looks like it's all kinds of different card backs here. So you got a Canadian card back. Well, is that the Canadian? No, that's the U.S. card back, I believe, on the far right of VC74. You've got VC108. That's the U.S. card back for Jar Jar. A little crease there in the upper left, or excuse me, upper right-hand corner on the back. And then this VC74 was the European release. You can tell it's got that big warning sticker that went over the front of the card back. Anyway, all three of them were unpunched, and this was sold over in Switzerland. And shout out to my viewers over in Switzerland and Norway. I'm sh I was shocked when I looked at my recent YouTube kind of metrics, and you guys are like in the top three or four in terms of countries that watch my channel. It's U.S., Australia, the U.K., and then Norway and Switzerland. You guys love this channel. So I, I want to thank you guys over there in Switzerland and Norway. Uh, this one sold for $165 free shipping. So pretty good deal there for all three of those if you can live with the defects. Uh, here was another unpunched Jar Jar Binks in Carbonite, the SDCC exclusive. Uh, this one was listed for $900 US dollars. It sold for $810. And we documented one example that sold for about $650. And then we also documented the factory test shot that sold for about 1000 bucks. So that gives you three different data points for recent sales for Jar Jar Binks and Carbonite, a very expensive item. And this one was a beautiful example. It looked really nice and clean and probably why it sold for a little bit more than the other one that sold at auction for about $650. But uh, just another data point. I've got a few data points for vehicles. This was the Kmart exclusive ATST Scout Walker, Return of the Jedi box art. This one sold for $153 free shipping. And then we had the original issue Toys R Us exclusive Millennium Falcon mint and sealed bo box. It was not mint. It did have some wear. You can see it, some damage in the upper right hand corner on the back. A uh, little bit of damage here, a little waviness, as you can see. Looks like it looks like some rats or you know some kind of insectoid type creature got their grubby little thoraxes all over this thing and decided to munch away at the box. But anyway, that one sold still sold for three hundred and seventy five dollars plus one hundred and seventy one dollars shipping. I think I think that's going to be an overpay. I think that's an overpay given the damn. Oh wow, look at that! I, I didn't even notice this damage. So. It might be mint in sealed box, but clearly something got a hold of this thing. Either somebody ran out of food, and because of supply, supply logistics and the expensive uh, prices of gasoline, they decided to eat the box instead of going to the grocery store, or uh, there's some water damage or something else going on. But anyway, that sold for $375 plus $171 shipping. Now, that's that equates to about, let's call that 500 bucks or so. 475 over $500 so $550 I think if you're patient you could pay a little bit more and and get one for a lot cleaner condition rather than getting this one that's that's been all chewed up this is crazy I didn't even notice that when I picked this one out for the for the video but anyway uh, just some interesting information there for you know clearly someone's probably gonna buy that and then open it up and display it but that seems like a lot of money to me uh, the Razor Crest seems to be going down in price, folks. This one was a mint and sealed shipper box Razor Crest that sold for six sixty on free shipping. That is down. That is way down from seven fifty to eight fifty for a mint and sealed shipper box Razor Crest. So that one is definitely dropping like a rock. Uh, here was a Shea Vizsla. This one, I believe, was the original issue. Original issue VC one hundred one U.S. card back. It was punched. It was listed for one hundred ninety nine dollars. That sold for one seventy. 170. I think if you know if you're patient, you can pick this one up unpunched for just a little bit more money than that. So I, I me personally, I probably I probably be a little pickier and just wait for an unpunched example. But it was a, a really clean card, other than the the, the fact that it was punched. Uh, here's one in my collection, although mine is the Canadian card bag. This is the U.S. card bag for VC 110, the Shot Trooper. That sold for ninety dollars plus six dollars shipping. I love that one. That's one that I was give I was gifted by Patreon supporter Keith Guppy. So shout out to Keith and shout out to all my other Patreon supporters. You guys allow me to make more and better videos. Thank you so much for all the channel support. This was another uh, really nice example though. The US card back, it was punched just like mine. But again, that one sold for $95 roughly after shipping. Uh, Princess Leia Bespin, VC111. That one seems to be creeping down just ever so slightly in price. You know, beginning of the year, this was like 120 to 140-ish. This one sold for $100 plus $9.85 shipping, so it hasn't moved that much, but it does seem like the data points that I found 
for Princess Leia in her Bespin outfit are a little bit lower than they where they were at the beginning of the year. And that might, honestly, folks, that might be true for every vintage collection. They might be just a tad lower as we head into the fall. Uh, obviously, the recession is here, in my opinion, and the data points are starting to prove it with unemployment creeping up a little bit, uh, projected layoffs with corporate, you know, corporate companies that have been surveyed. Those are really jumping as of the data this morning on July 7th. So I, I think that we might see a little bit of a drop in VC, but as we've talked in the ch on the channel, I don't expect to be like, a, I don't, I don't see the vintage collection dropping by 50% or anything like that. We might see a five to 10% haircut, you know, over the course of the rest of this year, but maybe it's a good buying opportunity. You know, it's not, it's not going to be a significant drop if, if it drops, but I, I do think it, it will kind of just slightly drop just like this VC 111 Leia Bespin. Uh, this is the Luke Skywalker crate VC 146. Pretty clean example. Looks like it had a little wear around the the hang tab. A little bit of litho damage there. That still sold for 80 bucks though, and that's kind of in line with where this one has been selling. Kind of 75 on the low end to kind of 85 or 90 dollars. So um, again, I, I think you got to be really picky with condition. And this one looks to it, either it's dust or to me it looks like a litho damage to the to the hang tab. I would be more patient and pick up one that's super mint and super crispy. But uh, that's another data point there. Um, this data point supports the idea that the 501st Legion is dropping a little bit in price. But this one is the special action figure set that was, I believe, a Hasbro Direct or Hasbro Pulse exclusive. 501st Legion, really nice. It, it looks like it had a little bit of, I think maybe the reason why it dropped a little bit, because it looks like it had a little defect in the upper right-hand corner on the front, as you can see there. Uh, that one sold for 95 pounds or 113 U.S. dollars. Now, part of it, too, is that the U.S. dollar has really strengthened versus the euro and the British pound, the, the sterling. So, you know, I, I don't I don't know if it's just a flight to safety or, or what, but with with the recent kind of recession kind of news creeping out there, it does seem like the U.S. dollar has strengthened. So for those of you in the U.S. watching this video, I think that you'll find that the buying opportunities overseas will improve. The euro has dropped like a rock relative to, to the US dollar. It's gone from about a $1.10 per, per euro to almost even. And there's rumors that it's gonna drop below the dollar. So the euro is gonna be worth, uh, one euro is gonna be worth less than the US dollar heading into the late summer, early fall. We'll see if that happens or not, but it's almost a one for one ratio and that's about a 10% drop versus the beginning of the year. So pretty incredible news there. Um, next up is a beautiful, Haslab Sail Barge, the Jabba Sail Barge pack-in, the Yak Face, really beautiful example. That sold for 250 pounds or about 300 US dollars plus shipping. It looked to be very, very clean though. That's a beautiful one. I'd love to have that one in my collection. Certainly, I'm not going to be getting the vintage one. That There's one at auction on Hakes right now that I'm sure I will document post, you know, post Hakes closings. But there is a Power of the Force Yak Face, which, would, which I believe was only available in Canada that's very high grade that is at auction at Hakes. I didn't do a preview video this time because I was out of town and bidding's already started. But uh, but the end of the month, I believe the auction's in like around July 27th. So I'm sure that I'll be documenting a number of the awesome Hakes items, including that vintage Canadian yak face. Uh, here was an uncirculated 9.0 VC-151 Luke Skywalker Yavin. Pretty clean, looked nice. Uh, uncirculated grade, so nice gold level AFA grading. That one only sold for $102.50 plus shipping, $11.50 shipping. That's a pretty good deal on, on a VC-151. So another data point there. Um, now I want to talk about the Bad Batch 4-pack. Now the Bad Batch 4-pack, when it first got into you know early in-hand type eBay sales, it got ridiculous. It was like $150 to $200, and then it very quickly dropped to about $50 to $60. Now this one did sell in Europe, so it might, you know, it might just be a, a supply issue over in Europe. But this one sold for 90 euros, which is about 91.65, as you can see right there. I mean, the euro versus the dollar is about one for one now, which is crazy. Plus shipping. Now this one sold in the U.S. almost the exact same time, and this seller had two of them, and they were 60 dollars free shipping. So that's that's a huge difference. That's that's a 50 percent difference in price for one that sold in Germany versus one that sold in the US. So I you know I don't again I don't know if it's a supply issue over in Europe right now versus uh, just somebody who was impatient but it was a number of different data points that I found that showed that at least in Europe 
this Bad Batch 4-pack is very, very expensive relative to the sales prices in the U.S. Bespin Security Guard, this is a new release. There's the white and the black version. This one is VC233, um, and this is the white version, and this one sold for $52 after accounting for shipping, and I found about the same price point, anywhere from about $40 on the low end, plus, you know, including shipping, all the way up to about $55 for both the white and the black security guard. I think that price will drop like a rock, so just be patient. Uh, that's a really nice looking card back though. Um, anyway, just a data point for a recent release. Speaking of another recent release, this is the Morak Boba Fett, the non-deluxe version. It looks fantastic on the card. There's been a lot of quality control issues for the deluxe version where you can't see it inside You know the, the, the blister-free packaging for the deluxe version. People are taking it out and they're finding the figure all kinds of mangled. I mean, just terrible, terrible quality control. So, uh, you know, to me, that is a signal that Hasbro has issues. They have quality control issues and they're just slapping them in there because you can't see it. You can't see it in those deluxe boxes. And uh, it's just a warning sign that the vintage collection could struggle if they move over to blister free packaging full time for, for these three and three quarter inch, you know, standard figures but uh what an awesome awesome card back i believe this was just reviewed by boss bounty on his channel it looks fantastic great head sculpt really nice this seller has one still available for 50 dollars plus 12 dollars shipping so that's 62 dollars. that's about 3x or 4x uh retail so really really expensive and uh but it, it's a beautiful card back uh finally i had to show this one as a as a humorous sale and I don't know if this is a legitimate sale, okay? But it says sold, all right? And I looked it up on 130 point, and it also confirmed that it was sold. But this one was some kid's drawing of a Mara Jade mocked up on a, a fake Kenner card back, Series 4 Mara Jade. So it, just hilarious. It was listed for $100.99 plus $15.99 shipping. $116, $117 somebody paid for this. I hope that it was not a legitimate sale, but it, it was listed and I checked multiple websites and that it was listed as a, as a sale. And this seller has 148 completed transactions with 100% positive feedback. So somebody liked what they saw in this Mara Jade custom. And I just thought I would show that for giggles. Uh, anyway, I hope you're new. If you're new to the channel, I hope you enjoyed the, the video. Uh, I try to cover price data for comics, for vintage collection, for vintage Kenner. Please consider subscribing. Please leave a like. Please comment below with any of your recent pickups for the vintage collection. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll be back soon.